Hello my friends and welcome to a new video. This video is a part of a series of videos about the main manufacturers reveals on the ADAC Sim Racing Expo of 2024. A big thank you goes out to my girlfriend that took the time to text me there. Fanatec didn't really release that much on ADAC this year, which seeing the current situation that I will not discuss is yeah, not that abnormal. I had a first look at the Bentley steering wheel and while my initial reaction of the display wobbling around the steering wheel was one of woe, I was less impressed with the execution of this all when I actually looked at it more closer. Especially the cheap looking and feeling buttons and joystick made it a bit of a letdown for me. Sure, the steering wheel is a product of actual motorsport, but yeah, I expected a bit less motorsport and a bit more motorsport. With a price of 2000 simoleons, it's safe to say that the price is in line with Bentley merchandise and absolutely out of reach for me doing a review about it. Fortunately, there was a CSL Elite steering wheel Porsche Vision GT to soften blow. Although it doesn't have the real racing pedigree of the Bentley wheel, it just looks far nicer. The design and layout look more stylish and the rim itself feels nice to the touch. The shifters feel different, perhaps due to the use of the hull sensors, um, and it was certainly a very nice shifting sensation. The Porsche logo on the center is also very chic and can be used as a horn since it has the push functionality. I just hope that the unknown price will be more in line with the wallets of the majority of our community. I did also have my first very positive encounter with the GTDD Extreme. While I didn't have that much time to test it, the steering wheel is certainly an upgrade to the GTDD Pro steering wheel and I wouldn't mind driving this one. While looking over this piece of hardware, a Fanatec representative came by so I could ask him some questions. So my question revealed that for full force, it was implemented and active in iRacing. The part of the implementation was known to me, but I had not heard it was active already. On the question when it would be ready for GT7, which would be the second game to receive it after iRacing, I got the answer that the ball was in the camp of the game developers themselves, leaving me to guess at what date it would actually be implemented. I also asked him uh, the question why Fanatic didn't bring out some nice gadget for the simulated driving market, like competitor Moza did with a trucking wheel and indicator stocks. The answer I got was that the DNA in Fanatic was for racing, not just driving, and that the market for those peripherals were just too small. I'm not sure if I agree with that statement though. Another cryptic addition that I got was that perhaps under another brand, some more simulated driving oriented peripherals would come out. I assumed he meant mother company Corsair with this. On the question if anything new was being presented by Fanatic, I got referred to the new cockpit of Corsair. From all the manufacturers I asked questions to, I think Fanatec was the least willing to answer with relevant data. I wonder why. The Corsair Fanatec cockpit is a piece of hardware that has been teased for a while by Corsair and has been presented at ADAC by the designer Mark Buck. It is a tubular frame, uh, available in white or black, with some yellow highlights and Fanatec branding. The main objective for the cockpit would be the maximum adjustability, sturdiness and, something that is a new concept for tubular frames, an open ecosystem for add-ons. The configuration happens all on the fly and should allow users between 1 meter 40 to over 2 meter to find a suitable uh, seating position in it. The pedals can be moved in depth, height and can be inclined. The wheelbase holder on the other hand can be moved in depth and uses the same sliding concept that I saw before in the Track Racer TR8 Pro. The seat is made out of two parts and can be moved up or down over a travel of about 10 cm and can be slid forwards and back on seat rails. When it comes to add-ons there are plenty too. There is a single display standard or one for three monitors that will hold 32 uh, to 55 inch monitors. There is a PC tray available and a shifter holder. Attaching the wheelbase will be possible with a tray or a front mounting. In all, a very complete setup. But there is more. You can add peripherals for extrusion profiles too on this rig. It features extrusion channels throughout the frame on which you can attach other, even non-Corsair hardware by the use of T-nuts, boosting the modularity and closing the gap for upgradability with the extrusion profiles. There are also cable management features which will allow you to route your cables through the frame and out of sight. This is a more than welcome feature seeing cable management is an issue a lot of us struggle with. 
Something which I also uh, have never seen on another rig are the bull horns on the frame. These are slotted also and are just a very handy spot to attach a tray for your phone, tablet or cup holder. When you think of it, it's pretty nice and has a bit the form like the dashboard of a car, encapsulating you more in the action. When it comes to the pricing, I expect it to be around 699 euro for a bare bone frame without seat, a display standard or shifter holder. This brings it in the same range as the Track Racer TR8 Pro. In all, the Fanatec Corsair lineup was limited and I guess that both companies are now more focused on aligning their companies and creating frameworks for their products and services. I will permit myself to say one thing about the entire takeover situation. I am glad Fanatec will live on and I hope to see another big turnkey simulator company arise from these two manufacturers. Thank you all for watching. More videos are still coming. Don't miss out on the Track Racer and Camus ones. Those manufacturers had a lot to offer this year. See you all next video. Bye bye.